Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Monday night update out here. It's about 9.45 p.m. California time, August 26, 2024. Uh, latest activity here on the globe shows some movement into the Southern California area. Uh, this earthquake activity uptick tends to uh it looks like it's following some larger movement out here across the western pacific there around the indonesia islands area earlier where we've seen that 5.8 uh looks like things are adjusting out here accordingly a little bit of uptick around the bakersfield area where we've seen that 5.2 uh, a certain number of weeks back also some newer activity here into the camarillo area looks like that's just off of the uh Oh, the semi-Santa Rosa fault zone. A little coastal range, mountain range up here. Uh, it's got some thrust faults that uh, build up here against the plate boundary. Not a big earthquake, but it uh, looks like about nine miles deep there for that little quake. A 2.4, nothing big, but, uh, you know, got to keep an eye on the Southern California area. S still seeing some movement out here across the Bakersfield region uh, with a 2.4 in that mix as well. Um... Yeah, it does look like things have picked up here uh, following that movement ways away from the uh, Pacific here, or ways away from California. Uh, in fact, following this earthquake here, this 5.8, roughly at about the same time, check this out, check out this time. Notice the time frame, 1915 at 18 seconds, okay? So remember that. And then as we go over here, Check out this earthquake that struck over here across the Cascadia subduction zone. 1915-27. So we're looking at 10 seconds, about 10 seconds, 12 seconds later, we've seen some earthquake activity adjustment take place here across the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. Coincidence? I think not. Uh, i got to remember when we move these plates around and shuffle them around, uh, it can uh, do things uh, build up strain or make other adjustments out here thousands of miles away and so not only was that earthquake there just literally seconds after the 5.8 thousands of miles away there in the indonesia island area uh, but we're seeing some elevated activity here since then uh, and in general southern california region so keep an eye on this area we're getting a, a little bit of uptick here since that movement earlier and uh, you can pretty much count them it looks like about uh Oh, here's, it looks like it halted about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And then uh, half an hour or so later, following that 5.8, we've seen the uptick go on here. And that's where we're looking at some uh, further increasing activity out here across Southern California uh, tonight. So we we'll continue to keep an eye on things. Uh, obviously, there's quite a bit of strain out here, quite a bit of fault systems that are uh, overdue for some big earthquakes. So just be prepared. We'll keep an eye on it. Uh, further up north, as I mentioned there, in the southern end of the Cascadia, just that one earthquake that struck 10 seconds following that 5.8 thousands of miles away. Uh, let's check out the trimmer map out here tonight, see if we got anything major going on here. Well, still got a pretty significant amount of trimmer stirring up here. Looks like about 570 epicenters, mainly underneath the uh, Washington area here. Vancouver Island range getting in on that as well. A little bit down in southern area of the Cascadia. It's going to be northern California here. This is the extent of the Cascadia. It doesn't go further down the coast here. This is a different transform uh, a plate boundary here. It's not a subduction zone. Subduction zone begins here at northern California for the Cascadia and extends well up off the coast of Oregon, Washington, and ends roughly around the Queen Charlotte Sound area. So, uh, yeah, that's still a decent amount of trimmer. 570 epicenters there of trimmer. Uh, further into the Pacific Northwest, nothing going on here. Uh, I do want to check out Earthquakes Canada real quick. See uh, what we have here for the map real quick. See if we've got anything else stirring up. Uh, the last earthquake measurable is 4.8 in terms of recent significant activity. Uh, look here at the map. does show some movement within the last... Oh, last, what is it, last day, way up north into the, uh, looks like it's up into the Yukon Territory area, way up there, around Old Crow for a little earthquake. Not a big one. Looks like a 3.4 coming in within the last day. Uh, aside from that, not a whole lot going on here across the uh, Canada area. Uh, the Cascadia subduction zone here at the northern end is uh, it, it's somewhat active. 
right up here, roughly around the uh, top of the Explorer plate. This is where the subduction zone ends right here, right where the two um, areas of the plates meet. And then we get the uh, different type of plate boundary heading up north uh, where they're seeing a little bit of adjustment. That's But that's very similar to California. How we're always seeing, you know, some degree of earthquakes on any given day right i've never pulled up this map and seen no earthquakes whatsoever so we're always getting earthquakes it's just a frequency of the larger uh, events that we've noticed here across southern california recently that's uh, a little concerning so uh, we'll continue to keep an eye there on the san andreas fault i was just looking at uh, a youtube video here from 1992 the landers earthquake out here in southern california big one and they were chatting about how uh, that earthquake uh, many years ago, right? That was a long time ago now, 1992. Goodness, seems like just yesterday. But uh, they were talking about how that earthquake could have, uh, you know, an immediate effect on the, even though it wasn't on that plate, the fault system, any large earthquake of a magnitude, considerable magnitude could trigger the San Andreas Fault. And they're talking about how long it's, you know, it's been since we've seen some major activity and it's well overdue. And they were talking about that back in 1992. Here we are, you know, over, yeah, that's over 30 years, right? Over 30 years later, and we still haven't seen a large release of pressure out here on the San Andreas Fault. So I know we're getting closer and closer here uh, to seeing a big one out here in Southern California. Whether that's going to happen this year, tonight, tomorrow, I don't know. Nobody knows for sure. But we got to look at all these little events here recently with elevated, you know, five, four magnitudes here. A bunch of other swarms around the San Andreas Fault, inland activity here across the Nevada area, all pins, uh, all pinpoints here to the plate boundary itself. That's where we're uh, uh, looking at the most increasing strain here, uh, and it's been the southern branch hasn't seen a full rupture in over 300 years. So we got to keep an eye on that, folks. Um, Yellowstone National Park, nothing showing up here, but uh, as always. Let me check out the Yellowstone overview here real quick. Just going to keep this kind of a short update. I don't want to go too long here. i got to get up somewhat early in the morning. Just started the uh, fall semester here at the college in Northern California where I'm at. So i got to make sure I get some sleep tonight, right? Um, nothing going on, really, uh, at Yellowstone National Park. This is one area where we really haven't seen any major earthquake swarms in quite a while. Um... Maybe some wind events out there earlier in the afternoon. Maybe some thunderstorms popping up. But in general, earthquake activity is non-existent out there across Yellowstone for now. Uh, Texas area, rest of the country, as you can see, very minimal activity. Uh, far as the rest of the globe goes here, or the flat scale model Earth, however you favor, um... Well, the last one looks like a 4.2 here across the Peru area, 49 miles deep here into that subduction zone. Uh, getting a handful of earthquakes up and down the Peru-Chile Trench here, mostly uh, Chile area south, uh, Peru-Chile uh, Peru border area southward, where we've seen that five-pointer down there in Chile earlier. Uh, that was uh, this morning, I think. Yeah, about 9 o'clock this morning. Uh, but that's a major subduction zone, so we're going to see earthquake activity out there on any given day, but no major earthquakes for now. Uh, pretty hefty amount of earthquakes across the Middle America Trench, some threes and fours, even some, I think we've seen a five in there as well. Um, another major subduction zone, but uh, nothing big going on there for now. There's that earthquake up in the Aleutian Trench from earlier, 5.1, nothing else following that event. New Zealand area, really not picking up too much earthquake activity couple threes down there across the plate boundary but uh, obviously strain is building up there as well latest earthquake looks to be a 2.7 out here across southwestern Australia I noticed these guys have been uh, getting quite a bit of earthquake activity here recently across uh, these intraplate intra faults and obviously that's got uh, a lot to do with the strain around this area of the plate boundary uh, there's that 5.8 there into the Indonesia Islands area Decent earthquake, but this area can see, oh my gosh, it's so they can see so many earthquakes here on any given year, any given day. All right, check out this uh, historical data map here. Look at this. There's where that 5.8 struck. And this just goes back to, uh, looks like 1900 to 2015. So earthquakes, I would say, are pretty common in that area.
very common. Uh, further up north here, a little earthquake around Taiwan, 4.3. That was from earlier this morning. It doesn't look like uh, we've seen any major adjustment here following that 5.8. Um, we did have a 4.6 there. It looks like half an hour later, further west across the plate boundary here. But again, that, that makes a little bit of sense there. A lot of migrational pressure patterns go across that area, as noted on... Where's my... Uh, Plate. Oh, I guess I don't have my plate boundary map up. I'll have to bring it back up. But the uh, general stress out here transfers across this area northward along the plate boundary. So we'll keep an eye further northward um, across the Java Trench here for some further movement in the near future. Mediterranean area, some twos and threes. Uh, getting a little bit of activity out there off on the coast. Off the coast, excuse me, of the Portugal area where they seen that earthquake uh, last night, 5.4. So it looks like this globe has a little bit too many quakes on there. There we go. That's probably about the last 24 hours there. Still though, that's, you know, plate tectonics, right? We're always seeing earthquake activity out here. Nothing of any, you know, major abnormal activity. Just some increasing movement out here across Southern California right now, following that 5.8 earlier today all right let's check out space weather see if anything's popping out here on the sun literally i don't think it is but uh hello okay uh fairly neutral in terms of flaring activity looks like we got a little bit of sea flare activity maybe a low-grade m flare uh event from overnight last night sunday night uh, tonight's obviously monday night for me, probably early Tuesday morning for some out there by the time they watch this video. But uh, we're fairly stable here. Just some sea flare activity. Really nothing big going on there on the sun for now. We do have a number of sunspots. Looks like they have increased the chance for X flare up to about 25% probability. And that is due to mainly, uh, let's see here, 5%, 5% there. Looks like maybe 3790 here has... Uh, a chance of seeing some stronger flares 3790 is going to be this far side sunspot out here on the western limb which is uh just about out of sight out of mind right here so uh while it's still here we still have a decent chance of some stronger flaring it looks like but the rest of these sunspots are looking uh not all that impressive not a whole lot of uh interesting development yet on the eastern limb but uh, we'll continue to watch these older sunspots that were here the last cycle around come back into the earth directed view Let's see if they want to throw off some flares or not uh, no major roars in the forecast here folks unfortunately uh, let's see what we got here for the numerical model we're gonna check out the Hawaii area real quick I know they've been dealing with some uh, recent tropical systems there um, let's put this into motion here a little bit see what we got a few different uh, this well, you could barely see it. This map's a little small here, but there's a couple tropical systems that will get absolutely demolished here from this high pressure as it enters into uh, into the Pacific. Doesn't look like any of those are going to hit the uh, Hawaii Islands as any type of uh, substantial uh, storm system. And far as the Atlantic goes, let's go check out the uh, North Atlantic states over here. Massive high pressure way out there. I'll put this into motion and see what, well, we got to go back a couple days here. Put this into motion, see what we got. Any tropical systems showing up on the weather models? I don't, I really don't see anything of major interest for now. That's good news, right? It's actually been a little quiet for hurricane season out here so far, but I don't want to jinx it. A couple dominant high pressure ridges out there. All right, folks, I'm out of here. Have yourself a good night. Keep an eye there on Southern California. Having a little bit of earthquake uptick there following that uh, that earthquake thousands of miles away, you know. Whether you believe that these earthquakes could affect other regions here or not, I mean, it makes sense, right? You adjust this entire plate. Even though that earthquake struck probably off the Pacific plate boundary, still the strain that uh, potentially can happen here in this area can have adverse effects thousands of miles away here across the eastern edge of this pacific plate so 
We've seen it. I mean, it's obviously a little bit of uptick here that's, that has taken place uh, following that event. All right. I'm out of here, folks. Have yourself a good night. I am off to dreamland. Have a good one.